السلام عليكم we'll talk about the epidemiology and prevention of MDRO outbreaks so in this lecture we'll cover the definition of MDROs type of MDROs presentation of MDROs by onset time and by symptoms factors contributing to MDRO in healthcare setting and prevention of MDRO uh, arranged according to the CDC guidelines So for the definition of MDRO, uh, any pathogen that develops resistant to one or more commonly used antimicrobials, by definition, is considered MDRO. These include gram-positive and gram-negative. Uh, the gram-positive include MRSA and VRE. MRSA is a staph aureus cultured from any specimen that tests uh, resistant to oxacillin cefotexine or methacillin uh, by standard susceptibility testing. For VRE, it is any enterococcus fecalis, enterococcus fecum, enterococcus sp uh, species unspecified that is resistant to vancomycin by standard susceptibility method methods. Although VRE is tested resistant only to vancomycin uh, and MRSA for methicillin uh, or other similar drugs, but basically they are resistant to multiple other drugs that's why they are considered MDRO. For gram negatives we have uh, several uh, ones the first one is uh, CRE or carbapenem resistant enterobacteria so it is E. coli, Klebsiella exotica, Klebsiella pneumonia or enterobacterial species testing resistant to one of the carbapenems, including amibenem, merobenem, dorabenem, ertabenem, by standard susceptibility methods, or uh, finding a carbaminase uh, producing organism uh, using a special testing like BCR or modified Hodge test. The other type uh, is kephalosporin resistant Klebsiella, it's Klebsiella oxytoca, Klebsiella pneumonia testing resistant or even intermediate to uh, one of the kephalosporins, uh, including ceftazidim, uh, cefotaxime, ceftriaxone, or cefibim. MDR acinetobacter is non-susceptible, which means resistant or intermediate, uh, intermediately resistant to at least one agent in at least the three to six uh, antimicrobial classes, and these include penicillins, aminoglycosides, cephalosporins, fluoroquinolones, carbapenems, and sulbactam. Uh, and this is the or these these are the specific uh, uh, antimicrobials in each group for those who wants to know more details. MDR Klebsiella or MDR Pseudomonas, it is uh, again similar to uh, uh, Acinetobacter, but it's not including Salbactam. So it is not susceptible, means resistant or intermediate for at least one agent into three to five antimicrobial classes, including penicillin, aminoglycoside, cephalosporins, fluoroquinolones, and carbapenems. ESPL or extended spectrum beta lactamase, uh, we should know that ESPL are enzymes that uh, confer resistance uh, to most beta-lactam antibiotics so they destroy them become ineffective uh, for treatment these beta-lactam include penicillins cephalosporins and monobactam asteronam uh, they are present in several organisms including enterobacteria especially e coli and klebsiella but also other gram negative such as pseudomonas aeruginosa Cholesteridium difficile, it, although it's not resistant to multiple antimicrobials, but since it is transmitted and prevented using the same standards for MDRO, they including them in the MDRO. And we consider it uh, positive when we have positive lab tests for C. diff toxins, uh, either A or B or both, using uh, molecular testing as BCR or toxin assay or both. Um, also, um, uh, toxin producing uh, C. diff uh, organism detected by culture or other lab mean uh, is considered positive uh, for uh, sufficient for detecting cholesterol deficit. Um, uh, 
here we show uh, the types of MDRO by onset presentation. Uh, and as you see, we have community onset and health care onset. Community onset when the specimen uh, collection, uh, uh, the specimen collected for detecting MDRO uh, was collected during the first three days of uh, admission, considering the admission day is day one. Uh, for health care onset, uh, it is uh, when the specimen uh, collected for detect detecting MDRO is collecting after the third day, so fourth day and, and, and on. Uh, and since we, we mentioned here the third day, some people are confused between the two days and three days mentioned in HAI and MDRO. So we have here uh, a, a short comparison between MDRO and HAI uh, uh, regarding the source of community onset uh, and uh, healthy care onset. Um, so uh, specimen collected to determine the community onset should be done within the first three days if we're if we're talking about MDRO, but within the first two days if we're talking about HAI. Uh, a specimen to determine the healthy care source should be collected after the third day of hospitalization if it is MDRO and after the second day if it is HAI. Remember that MDRO can be infection or colonization, but HAI is infection only. So this is uh, to avoid confusion between uh, the second and third day mentioned in HAI and MDRO respectively. Here are some examples uh, to determine if it's community onset or healthcare onset. Uh, the first one, when you have a patient in outpatient clinic and get sample like urine to detect uh, MDRO, and it was, mass, for example, positive for carbapenem resistant, uh, e. coli. In this case, it would be considered community onset because any uh, outpatient sample will be community. Uh, in another uh, example, uh, here you have a nasal swab taken on the third day of admission. So since it is within the first three days of admission, uh, we will consider it community onset. Uh, in the next example, you have the same organism MRSA detected from the same site nasal swab uh, during the fourth day, since it's outside the first three days, it's healthcare uh, onset. Remember that community or healthcare uh, facility onset are not affected if the retrieved MDRO uh, is uh, colonization or infection. So here we're talking about MDRO irrespective it was colonization or infection. So here we differentiate between uh, colonization and infection. Colonization means multiplication of microorganisms at the body orifices uh, and sites like uh, skin, uh, oral cavity, vagina, and so on, very anal region, and so on. Uh, and in this case, uh, there is no uh, clinical signs and symptoms and no detectable immune uh, reactions in the in the blood uh, and uh, 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 colonization uh, may end up uh, becoming infection, but sometimes remain colonization uh, forever, and sometimes it represents a carrier a carrier state, uh, and we shouldn't treat colonization. On the other hand, the infection here the uh, organism uh, cross the border, which is the skin or mucous membrane, enter the body, multiply inside the body, uh, and cause. Uh, clinical signs and symptoms and detectable immune reaction uh, and these need uh, treatment. For the factors contributing to MDRO in healthy care setting, uh, healthy care setting have MDRO level more than the community. So why it has a lot of MDRO inside the healthy care setting? Uh, because there is selective pressure exerted by exposure to antimicrobials in the community. So when the people in the community use much antimicrobials, they get some sort of MDRO, and when these patients are admitted to the hospital, they introduce uh, this MDRO to other patients. The next uh, factor is inappropriate or uncontrolled use of antimicrobials in healthy care setting. And this can take several uh, scenarios. 
like increased use of antimicrobial prophylaxis no need for example extended prophylaxis before the surgery it's only uh, one hour before the surgery uh, extended use of poly uh, microbial uh, therapy when the patient receive more than one antimicrobial uh, administration of suboptimal dose or insufficient duration uh, inappropriate choice of the antimicrobial uh, due to misdiagnosis uh, or lack of uh, microbiologic lab confirmation or frequent use of empiric treatment that is not changed after uh, two days uh, poor patient compliance with the uh, prescribed antimicrobial lack of alternative antimicrobials uh, for some infections in the hospital due to presence of severe infection caused by very resistant organism. The, the next one is inadequate adherence to infection control measures, including hand, hand hygiene, environmental cleaning, isolation, and screening. Uh, contact with colonized or infected patients due to lack of isolation procedure. We have uh, contact isolation for uh, patients who are MDRO, uh, if they are not uh, isolated and move freely in the hospital, they can introduce infection, uh, sorry, organism to others. Uh, and the presence of uh, vulnerable patients in the hospital, uh, severe underlying uh, who have severe underlying disease, uh, compromised uh, immune system due to presence of uh, renal failure and dialysis, uh, transplant patient, oncology patient, uh, recent surgery, especially abdominal surgery, presence of uh, enduling devices like uh, <clears throat> urinary catheter, ventilator, and so on, transfer of patient between institution, especially uh, susceptible ones, and prolonged hospital stay. Here we are describing the prevention of MDRO according to CDC guideline. Uh, and we have six points to discuss. Structure and system administrative support, education and training of healthcare worker, judicial use of antimicrobial, MDRO surveillance, infection control measures, enhanced environmental measures. So starting with the first uh, item for prevention, the structure and system administrative support. So you have to make sure that MDRO uh, is uh, among the organizational patient safety priority. There is there should be a policy uh, distributed across uh, the hospital. Provide administrative support uh, for the infection control department, including human and uh, physical uh, resources, so they can uh, uh, co combat uh, MDRO and make surveillance for MDRO. Uh, Keep good communication and feedback uh, to update uh, the progress uh, and effectiveness of intervention. Implement system changes uh, to communicate information about the MDRO rates and MDRO reports. Uh, implement multidisciplinary measures uh, to monitor and promote uh, healthcare staff compliance uh, with the measures to prevent MDRO. Implement system changes to designate and communicate information about patient known to be colonized with infected uh, MDRO. Uh, like if the patient has MRSA, they should be flagged on the system electronically. So all healthcare provider in different units in the hospital know about this patient. Continuing the system and uh, uh, structure administrative support, uh, support uh, participation of the, fa the facility and healthcare system in local, regional, and national uh, collision to combat emerging or growing MDRO problems uh, and follow, of course, the instruction uh, of these collisions. Uh, human resources, you have to train the healthcare workers about adequate uh, preventive measures and how to deal with MDRO cases. Uh, IT uh, can have a good impact on automated antimicrobial request uh, modification, uh, restriction, and so on. Uh, provide hand hygiene and environmental cleaning uh, products uh, across the hospital in convenient places. Uh, provide clinicians with antimicrobial susceptibility reports 
uh, and analysis of the trends so they can uh, prescribe uh, uh, appropriate antimicrobials. And you have also to either use national or local guideline for antimicrobials that should be printed and distributed across uh, the hospital. Uh, written plan for implementation uh, of prevention uh, 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 of MDRO. The next item is education and training of healthcare workers. Uh, and as you see, you provide training and education uh, about spread uh, of uh, MDRO, uh, prevention of MDRO, um, and uh, dealing with MDRO cases. Uh, do the assessment and evaluation of the staff knowledge and skill uh, uh, by field observation uh, or auditing and also uh, online infection control module that should be a requirement for recontracting a healthcare worker. Provide clinician with updated antimicrobial susceptibility reports and analysis of trends uh, as well as uh, printing a guideline for antimicrobial uh, prescription. Uh, uh, increase the frequency of MDRO educational program and sessions uh, all the time uh, infection control uh, practitioners are touring the hospital. Uh, additional review of uh, wise utilization of antimicrobial agents and this, this should be done by a specialized team uh, or uh, ID physicians. Uh, the next item is judicial use of antimicrobial. So this is the opposite of inappropriate use of antimicrobial. You should limit antimicrobial prescription to the minimum required. And when you are using antimicrobial, uh, you should use it according to local antibiogram. Uh, treat infection, not contamination. Uh, in, treat infection, not colonization. For example, if you find uh, candida in the urine, you should not treat this uh, as urinary tract infection. Uh, if you see MRSA in the nose or axilla, you shouldn't treat that uh, as uh, infection. Stop treatment when infection is cured or unlikely. Uh, avoid excessive duration of treatment. Uh, use narrow spectrum antimicrobial uh, as much as you can and restrict the use of broad spectrum antimicrobial. And this can be done only if uh, culture is available uh, early during the treatment course. Uh, implement systems, uh, as we said, IT uh, uh, system uh, to prompt physician to use appropriate antimicrobials, suggest for them the appropriate antimicrobial, restrict the use of some antimicrobials uh, for some category of physician like ID physician or IC physician. Uh, provide clinician with antimicrobial susceptibility reports and written antimicrobial guidelines. Uh, monitor trends in the incidence of, uh, uh, of uh, MDRO. Uh, so you know increasing and decreasing trend of MDRO. Uh, so uh, physician can prescribe accordingly establish a baseline uh, for MDRO to monitor. Uh, the fourth item is, medic, uh, is MDRO surveillance. It's a very important item for MDRO control program because it's considered a patient safety component. Uh, it can detect the newly emerging resistance. It monitors the trends of current MDROs in the hospital and the effectiveness of intervention uh, employed. Uh, establish system uh, th that allow uh, the microbiology laboratory, either in the hospital or outside the hospital, to promptly uh, notify infection control about any uh, new resistance. Uh, use a standardized lab methods in detecting MDRO because sometimes the definition of the MDRO is different according to infection control guidelines and the lab. So what is the indication of a screening uh, in MDRO surveillance? Uh, we do a screening uh, during the outbreak as part of outbreak investigation and case uh, finding as part of infection control practices to manage an outbreak. Uh, sometimes uh, routine infection control practices 
uh, before admission to certain units according to the local uh, uh, hospital policy, uh, especially ICU uh, and sometimes oncology units. Um, a screening specimen should be collected uh, once the antibiotic has been discontinued for at least two days to avoid false negative results. Uh, so a screened patient should be not on antibiotics. Uh, so screening may not be appropriate uh, if it is uh, across the board. So routine, routine screening of all patients admitted to the hospital from the community is not recommended. Also routine screening of staff is not uh, recommended uh, if we found uh, that the staff is colonized with MDRO, uh, you can uh, study the uh, predisposing uh, causes, but no need for uh, restricting uh, the patient, uh, the healthcare worker uh, from uh, working in a steed. Uh, staff should receive education on a standard precautions, particularly hand hygiene. This slide show you the antimicrobials and the specimen appropriate for screening. We will not go through all of them and they will be repeated in the next lecture about the specific antimicrobials. But this slide tell you that every organism has a specific uh, uh, specimen uh, uh, appropriate for it. For example, MRSA, we take the specimen from NERS axilla groin. On the other hand, uh, we take the ASBL specimen from stool or rectal swab and sometimes uh, from the urine if needed. And this slide also summarizes the appropriate patients for screening. Uh, for MRSA, there is extended uh, appropriate patient criteria like transferred from another hospital, history of hospitalization within the last uh, month, uh, patients who are previously infected or colonized with MRSA before admission to ICU or oncology unit, uh, those who are scheduled for cardiac surgery and other major surgeries, uh, patient on continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, and roommates with, uh, of positive patients uh, who are not in precautions for more than uh, three days. Uh, so, uh, the the uh, criteria for screening for uh, other organisms like VRE, CRE, SBL, uh, mainly directed toward the roommates of uh, patients exposed to uh, MDRO positive uh, patient. Um, uh, Candida auris uh, screening can be done for exposed healthcare workers and roommates. So this is a little different from uh, previous uh, can, uh, MDROs. Uh, however, the specimen uh, collected from patient and healthcare worker are different, uh, and uh, uh, in, in, in healthcare worker, uh, there is no stool, but in patient, there is a stool a specimen. Uh, the fifth item is infection control uh, measures, and these are the measures that should be taken uh, to prevent the spread of anti -micro uh, MDRO within the facility. Uh, the first one is the standard precaution. So you should consider all specimen as infectious and deal with accordingly. Implement a contact precaution to routinely for, air, for all patients who are MDRO positive. Uh, if uh, they should be in a single room, uh, if the single room is not available, you need to cohort uh, uh, patients with the same MDRO uh, in uh, the same room. Uh, they should wear a uh, mask if the specimen is from respiratory specimen. Uh, they should uh, wear gowns and gloves if uh, to meet the uh, contact precaution. Um, uh, implement evidence-based uh, preventive measures, including bundles to prevent the uh, healthcare associated infection within the facility. Uh, accurate and rapid diagnosis of infection will would uh, reduce the exposure risk. Reduce the utilization of uh, devices like uh, urinary catheter, ventilator, and central line uh, because these are predisposing factor for both HAI and MDRO. Prevention uh, of MDRO transmission, this would uh, require, the most important is hand hygiene, 
uh, you should uh, educate people about hand hygiene, provide them with hand hygiene uh, solutions, and monitor hand hygiene compliance within uh, the facility. Uh, use uh, the appropriate uh, BPE for contact uh, precautions, uh, active surveillance, uh, use of isolation uh, precautions, as we said, standard and contact isolation for those with positive MDRO, either colonized or infected. Patient placement, uh, they should be placed in a single room. If there is no single room, you then you cohort similar uh, patients, uh, but do not uh, uh, cohort patients uh, with different MDRO. Enhancing uh, environmental uh, measures, uh, clean and disinfect surfaces, as you know, MDRO is mainly uh, transmitted uh, by uh, touching contaminated surfaces, especially high touch area and uh, medical equipment, contaminated medical equipment. So regular cleaning and disinfection of surface and equipment is essential to prevent the spread of the MD MDRO. Uh, dedicate non-critical item for patients who have MDRO, uh, like thermometer, for example. But if this is not uh, possible, uh, then you have to uh, clean between different patients and usually focus on high touch area uh, around the patient uh, and disinfect reusable uh, medical equipment uh, before use by other patients. Uh, precaution during transportation of MDRO patient, keep the patient movement to the minimum. This is the baseline. If you can provide uh, the uh, care uh, at bedside, it is better than transferring the patient to another unit. Uh, if you can do the test in inside your unit is, is better than tra transporting the patient. Uh, if you are doing this, you have to inform the receiving department with the patient and the MDRO type before uh, scheduling, uh, before uh, uh, starting the transport. And once you do the transport uh, uh, that is unavoidable, you should follow the appropriate procedure. Uh, for example, you clean the patient, give bath uh, to the patient if uh, possible, uh, seal all open wounds if the patient have uh, open wounds with MDRO. Uh, the patient must wear a new gown before uh, transport and before leaving the room. Both the patient and healthcare worker should uh, take off uh, their BBE before leaving the room, do hand hygiene, and then leave uh, the room. Transport staff uh, should not wear uh, yellow gown or gloves uh, uh, to transport uh, patients, except when close contact is required. Uh, why? Because we need at least one transporter uh, not wearing BBE uh, to help them uh, move with the doors and elevators, uh, knobs, and so on. Um, uh, if the patient uh, bed uh, used in transportation have equipment like IV bowl, this should be cleaned and disinfected before uh, transportation. A healthcare worker should wear a BBE to handle uh, the patient at the transport destination. Uh, and after uh, the patient leave the area, it should be cleaned uh, uh, with hospital approved disinfectant. Uh, limit the uh, transportation and procedures as much as you can. Do not allow sitters except if medically indicated. If sitter unavoidable and medically indicated, especially uh, like parents staying with a child in isolation for MDRO, then you have to educate the, uh, the sitters uh, to uh, follow contact precautions uh, as uh, similar to the patient. So they have to wear appropriate uh, BBE like gloves and gowns and do not uh, leave the room af except after taking off this BBE and making uh, hand hygiene. If they don't, uh, if the sitters are, uh, are not wearing the uh, appropriate BBE, then they have uh, to put on a clean a change of cloth and perform hand hygiene before uh, leaving the room. If they uh, don't uh, do that, they have to leave the room to the outside directly and do not allow it, uh, to move freely in the hospital. Uh, you should uh, designate respiratory 
therapy to provide care for MDRO uh, patients uh, as much as you can. Uh, you should uh, clean uh, uh, medical equipment, including ventilators and endoscope uh, between uh, different uh, patients uh, uh, with MDRO. Uh, make sure a patient with MDRO uh, are seen the last one at the end of the day if you have to schedule them. Uh, therefore, they don't contaminate uh, the medical equipment and expose other patients to uh, risk of exposure to MDRO. Manage MDRO positive patients. Start by contact isolation, as we said, strict hand hygiene, cohorting non uh, critical items to a patient in patient room, minimize the amount of supplies in the patient uh, room, and use uh, isolation cart outside the patient room uh, because any material inside the patient room would be considered uh, contaminated uh, when we discharge the patient and will be loss of supplies. Uh, limit patient activity outside the room to minimum. Make sure that the same time and terminal cleaning of isolation room and equipment is done according uh, to the appropriate housekeeping uh, procedure. Uh, handle and discard contaminated objects as per standard precautions. So you will consider every item as infectious. A request infectious disease consult if needed. Discharge patient if medically, if the medical condition allows to reduce the time MDRO patient to stay in the room. Discontinue isolation after prior consultation with infection control. Review implementation of HAI uh, bundles uh, to uh, ensure uh, prevention of uh, developing HAI. Use patient dedicated or single use disposable non-critical items uh, as much as you can, like blood pressure cuff or stethoscope. Uh, if this is not possible, then you have to clean uh, medical equipment between patients, monitor compliance with environmental cleaning uh, uh, policies, monitor cleaning uh, performance, uh, as per uh, policy, educate uh, housekeepers, uh, obtain environmental uh, cultures when uh, a, a outbreak is thought to be environmentally, uh, there is environmental source for the outbreak. Uh, empty units for better environmental intensive uh, cleaning if the previous efforts failed. So cleaning patient rooms is very important uh, uh, environmental measure. It sh this should be done on a daily basis. Uh, also cleaning mob uh, water should be uh, uh, this, uh, changed after uh, each room cleaning. Uh, wipe the mob handle with disinfectant and the mob head itself is bagged and sent to the laundry for uh, cleaning. Clean all equipment with approved uh, disinfectant. Uh, do terminal cleaning of the room uh, after the patient discharge or transfer or death. This including changing the curtain and with disinfectant mobbing of the floors, wall, bed, bed uh, side table, telephone, IV bowls, and all other high touch areas. Uh, curtain sheets and other durable items will be bagged and sent to the laundry for cleaning and disinfection. Use single use disposable equipment for care of the patient of the MDRO whenever possible. Clean uh, when durable equipment is used and cannot uh, and is going to be used between patient uh, and this is like ABG machine, uh, X-ray machine and so on. So these should be cleaned with uh, hospital approved disinfectant before using on another uh, patient. Keep all items, uh, out, uh, including dressing, syringe, IV ball, uh, to minimum within the room because uh, after patient discharge, this should be discarded and will be loss of uh, items. Keep linen in water soluble bags and send to the laundry for cleaning and disinfection as per hospital policy. Thank you very much.